Good morning, everyone. How's it going? Riley here. And today we've got an awesome project we're working on. So for those of you who don't know, I is Agri Studios am a full service video production company that primarily works in the ag sector. So that's awesome because I get to discover so many new things that are happening in ag across Montana and across the U.S. as well. So today we're going to be learning about a new crop. This is an oil seed crop called Camelina, and they're gonna use this crop to produce renewable diesel. Let's learn more. Let's head out to a field day in Northern Montana here. We're in Haver right now. I'm gonna drive out to the field this morning. Let's learn more about what's going on. But first, there's some in the hotel parking lot I gotta show you guys. One moment. Okay guys, couple things to keep in mind. This is not mine, no idea whose it is, but it's here. That is awesome. I am not sure what it is doing here. The vehicle towing it has Minnesota plates. But I want to know who owns this thing. Anybody out there on the internet know? It is quarter after seven and we are late. We should probably go. So let's do that. Time lapse time. guys we made it we're here just wrapped up the first drone flight of the field this is looking very impressive considering considering this year's growing conditions out here in montana like it's kind of blowing my mind to be honest this is what the crop looks like right now but if we go back to june last month the crop looked almost completely different so why don't we go ahead and flash back to june i've got a little reel that i made back at those field days we're gonna see what things were looking like and what a couple producers thoughts were. We were looking for a, another crop that was an oil seed. We raised some flax and a few other oil seeds and we were looking for another uh, rotation. Exxon Mobil was, was key in being involved for us wanting to get involved with, with the Camelina. Once we saw that, that a company had partnered with Exxon, we knew that there was money to back it and, and we felt confident that they were gonna be around and so we knew it was something that we could count on. 406 is working with sustainable oils and setting up some field scale trials, Camelina trials. So taking a plot research and then moving that into a field scale. Our role is to help set up the trials, uh, to test all the analytics on it from soil testing to tissue, also track the equipment data, all from seeding to the combine data on the yields is our ultimate goal to see what kind of variability there is between these varieties. One of the, the big benefits is, is adding another tool in our toolbox on our crop rotation. So Montana is blessed with the ability to grow a, you know, quite a few different crops. We'll be able to crop maybe instead of every other year, we'll be able to have two crops in, in three years is what we're looking at doing out here. We hope that it becomes a major rotation. You know, for us right now, it's, it's wheat and a pulse of some sort. And if we can get an oil seed that that we can make a little money on, we're gonna be adding that to our rotation. I think it's gonna be uh, good for our rotation as well. It helps us with soil health, helps us with insect and weed management. So having that third uh, type of crop is definitely a soil health benefit for us. We're able to seed this crop early. So earlier than any of our other crops we can actually go in and the ground is still very cold and actually frozen. So it really opens up our window on our spring seeding so we can seed this crop before anything else. This crop is seeded at a quarter inch, so very reliant on spring moisture to get up, get it up and going. We were cool, um, as we know, everybody knows, in, in April, so it's a little bit slow taking off, but the last couple of weeks it is really, really, really growing fast. We'll see how harvest goes and then we'll just uh, play it by ear, but we're, we're pretty excited to, uh, to be in on the ground floor here and, and see how things go. We just wrapped up location one, headed to location two. Man, this stuff is looking very impressive so far. Like I was impressed with it back in June, but we've gotten hit with a lot of drought here in Montana lately, as some of you guys might know. And the drought resistance of this crop is beyond my expectations so far. 
Is it absolutely perfect? No, it's not. It is, this field's coming in a little uneven, but I mean, this is a very resilient crop. Like it is taking the stress really well. So pretty amazing to see. Okay, made it to the next stop. This is a kind of a midway stop. Just looking at a producer's field here. It's looking pretty good. We're just a few miles from the Canadian border. It's back that way. We're gonna do some drone flyings. So here's the drone. I'm gonna grab it out. I'm just gonna use the small one. To be honest, I've been flying this small drone quite a bit more than the big one lately. And that whole thing deserves its own video of why. We'll have that coming out sometime, whenever it gets done. It's been busy lately, but you won't want to miss it when it comes out. All right, guys. Well, we've got a couple people from Sustainable Oils here. I'm gonna let them introduce themselves and we're gonna talk a little bit about what's going on here and what the heck this whole Camelina thing is. So go ahead, guys, introduce yourselves. Well, I'm Mike Karst. I'm Vice President of Operations at Sustainable Oils. Barney Bernstein, Head of North American. Gotcha, so first of all, what is Camelina for the guys that have, they just, clicked on this video just started watching. What is Camelina? Camelina is a, um, a brassica oil seed. Um, used to be a weed. It was a weed in Europe, but really? we have improved it. We've been breeding Camelina to improve uh, varieties. And uh, it's specifically, we're using it for renewable diesel. So we'll crush the seed, uh, extract the oil, That'll go into a refinery, just like a petroleum refinery, be converted into uh, diesel fuel, which is just the same as number two diesel, except it comes from a renewable source. It comes out of the field instead of out of the ground. Pretty much. So, yep, yeah, like I said earlier, it's basically an oil seed crop and it gets turned into re renewable diesel. So why, why is it here in Montana? Well, the reason it's here in Montana is we have cool weather. It's a, it's a cool weather crop, a winter annual, and it, um, it takes very little moisture to grow it. So it fits really well in a wheat fallow situation where instead of wheat fallow, wheat fallow, we can do wheat, camelina, and then back to wheat. So it's been a dry year out here in Montana, like very dry, very hot, but this stuff has looked pretty great across the board. I've been traveling to the field days with these guys across the state. I've been pretty impressed. So yeah, um, what, why has Camelina been doing pretty well here? Let's just talk about that a little it, bit. It's, uh, it's a unique crop. It's uh, very drought tolerant. Um, what we've seen across these uh, field trials and across the production uh, fields, um, even with as little as two inches or less of rain from planting, uh, the crop's done really well. Um, we're looking at yields of 1,000 to 1,200 pounds or higher. It's, it's been a really pleasant surprise for us to come out. Um, just like most growers, when you see that kind of rainfall, we were concerned too about what the performance would be. And this crop just continues to surprise us year after year at how resilient it is. You know, one of the things it does as far as growth pattern, it starts out as a rosette. And while it appears on the surface that it's not doing much growing at all, but it's sending the taproot down. So by the time the plant gets to be about six inches tall, you've got about a seven inch taproot and it's beginning to send the roots down and get into that moisture. And I think that's a big secret of what we see behind us is very little rainfall, um, but a pretty good crop. And, and like you said, we've seen it all over Montana consistently outperforming any other crop we've seen in Montana today. Yeah, for sure. It's I've I've just been flat out amazed at it. Let's talk a little bit about Exxon Mobil stepping into the room on this. What exactly did they say? What do they want out of this? Well, what what Exxon Mobil wants out of this? They're in the business of supplying diesel fuel to trucking companies, railroads, uh, consumers that need diesel fuel, and for the California market, they needed a renewable diesel product that is a very low carbon intensity. And so they looked at Camelina, and when you think about the fact that it, it takes very little water, relatively low inputs, 
it doesn't replace a food crop because we're replacing a, a fallow acre. Uh, when you add all those things up, it's a very low carbon intensity crop, and that's what really sets Camelina apart from all the other crops. Yeah, for sure. So basically, we were talking earlier, the goal was to grow, what, like a million acres of this stuff in Montana in a given season? Mm-hmm. It seems like every year we, or every day we talk to Exxon, the number keeps going up. <laughs> wow, so. <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, we're, I mean, ultimately here in Montana, we'd like to have a million acres. Yeah, and that's a lot. That's a lot right there. So there's a dedicated refinery in Bakersfield, California that's gonna be you know, producing the renewable diesel based off of this stuff and the demand is high to grow this. So you guys are gonna be looking for quite a few grower contracts here. Yes, we are. We're gonna be issuing contracts uh, over the next uh, 30 days or so, sometime in August. Uh, the contracts will come out for 2022. And if people have an interest, we'd, be, we'd love them to give us a call directly go into their local CHS uh, retail operation and ask them about it they can get them in contact with us as well if you're here in Montana CHS 406 agronomy they're great resources to get you connected to these guys I will put some other contact info in the description as well and this isn't just Montana they're doing this in what other states do you have this grown in Kansas and Colorado this year and uh, we we do seed production in Idaho Oregon so uh, we're expanding into Washington next year. Awesome. Basically the PNW. Yeah, you know, that'll be a good spot too. Just like uh, especially Montana growers to take, uh, take a look at Camelina. Biofuels have been a big industry for the Midwest for many years with uh, ethanol and, and biodiesel. And what we're offering is for Montana growers to be a part of this uh, renewable fuel opportunity rather than sending the money to the Midwest, let's keep it in Montana. Yeah, really exciting, really exciting. Okay, so another another big thing I've heard about this is you can actually deliver it to your local elevator. That's huge. Yeah, we have uh, three delivery points in the Golden Triangle. Uh, CHS Shelby, which is close to where we are today. Uh, CHS Haver and uh, CHS Kershaw. So those three locations are probably within about 60 miles of uh, almost any grower that uh, uh, would be in that area. We also have uh, GGC Moccasin. United Grain Corporation in Moccasin. Yep. And United Grain Corporation at um, uh, Pompey's Pillar. Yeah, so that's big for us because, you know, us and along the edge territory, it's the absolute middle of nowhere. We're, we're so far away from rail. So our local elevators are UGC Moccasin and Gavilon and more, and they're both like 60 to 70 miles away from our farm. Well, all these specialty crops like, you know, peas, canola, those elevators down there won't take it. We have to go even further to like Great Falls or Fort Bend, which is over a hundred miles away. Well, guess what? This crop, we can haul it to our local elevator. That's huge. All right, well, thank you very much, guys. If you do want to follow up on this whole Camelina deal, Mike and Barney's contact info in the description, hit them up and I'll keep you guys updated on a few things here and there on this as well, because it's cool stuff. Well, you know what? I need a nice little office space to work in here for a little bit. Driving down this random road, there's this one farm here. And then, you know, I might just go see if I can use their office for a little bit. Shouldn't be a problem, right? Visitors by appointment only. Nah, they shouldn't care. I'll just roll right in here. Man, I have some nice combines. Little farm shop here. I think this is where we'll park and uh, see what we can get done here. There we go. Okay, get some work done here in the office. Man, this is a really comfy couch. All right, check some email here. Nothing's possibly gonna go wrong by doing this. I don't think Nick will care. Oh, where are we on here? Uh, excuse me, sir? Oh, you, you, are you that leg arms guy? Are you that random person that just walks into random shops and like sits down and makes your house so Oh, no, 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 no. Nick and I, we're like, we're like best buddies. It, it should be all right, right? Yeah, did you get an appointment? An appointment? Well, um, uh, Did you not see the signs outside? The center's by appointment only? Oh. Come on, buddy. That 
No worries, guys. I did have an appointment. Nick said it'd be fine for me to come over. And he even let Leg Arms know so that, you know, I didn't get run off the property or anything like that. Leg Arms, he was cool with it, right? You know, I have no choice because Nick, he, I work for Nick. So if he says something, I, I have to go with it. And if he lets random strangers invade our privacy, <laughs> that's fine because that's what Nick says, so. Yep, I even filmed all this footage. It's like Welker Farms exposed. The Welkers exposed. are nothing like they are yeah, on YouTube. We're like real jerks. You know? Oh, they're like, terrible. Leg arms, he's, ah, uh, man. Yeah, we just, I think that's my key to go because I just, I can't take this. <laughs> yeah, I that's not true I, either. I can't, I can't handle this. Oh, yep, there he goes. Yep, in reality, um, I can tell you guys, as a fellow Montanan, these Walker guys, they're awesome people. They love doing what they do. And yeah, if you can get an appointment, it's a great place to stop by, but yeah. Don't show up in their yard unannounced. We better hit the road again. We do have one more field day to go to, so better say goodbye and we'll visit we'll visit the Welkers another time. Maybe next time Nick will actually be here. Nick's uh he's on he's on vacation somewhere. It's actually getting a little cold outside, guys. Beautiful evening. Absolutely beautiful. There's the sun going down there. So we're about we're between Shelby and Conrad. That's where we're at right now. This is the producer's field and it's looking pretty good. A little greener than the other, so he'll be a little further behind on harvest, but I mean, looks all nice and even. Take a look at one of these pods here. So you see I split that open. There's the little seeds there, so those will be crushed, turned into oil, refined into renewable diesel. All right, guys. It's 11.30 p.m., finally made it back to the hotel, and we're about to go to bed. But first, a few more things that I have to do, especially when traveling on these video shoots. We gotta back up all our footage. So over here, we're getting that done. Back up the footage here. And then another cool thing that we can do is actually uh, transfer everything from here back to the server at home. And that way, all the footage is there, safely backed up and ready to go when it's editing time. Pretty sweet system. Over here, we have battery charging central. So this is a case I made, contains all the charging. This is what goes in the back of the pickup on a power inverter to keep everything juiced up on the go. All our cables, batteries, chargers, they're all here. Very good way to keep things organized. And then this is just a Pelican case of all the uh, standard camera gear that we have. So, you know, tripod plates, cables, the little Osmo action that I usually log on out of its case, lenses, another camera, all the stuff that we need. Anyway, guys, that's gonna conclude today's video. So thank you very much for watching and thanks to Sustainable Oils for sponsoring today's YouTube vlog. We'll be back with more updates on this project, so stay tuned. And if you thought this whole Camelina thing was kind of interesting to learn about, let me know. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Catch you next time. Yeah, so the other cool thing about these guys is if I make a spelling mistake in the title of a YouTube video, Mike lets me know right away. <laughs> so, oh man, I need to get a little better about that. But. Yeah, it's it's a game loading, a loading a unit train of game. Yeah, there was some guy that commented and I'm like, why is this guy talking about laundry detergent on my video? <laughs> how, how long does it take to load a unit train of Tide? Or <laughs>